Graffiti is an international language and all over the world as many people despite it as appreciate it. A glimpse at Israel's graffiti world takes us on a fascinating tour through the country's historical, social and cultural story. I-24 News cultural correspondent Shahal Pelled hit the streets and came back with this. <laughs> Graffiti, the urban writing on the wall most people find unesthetic or ignore as they pass by it. For others, it's a paradise of art and history. So this piazza keeps on changing. Meet Guy Sharet, an Israeli Hebrew teacher who speaks seven languages, including Thai and Indonesian, who invented streetwise Hebrew, an innovative method of Hebrew language instruction through the sounds, smells and sights of the streets. Today we write it like this, Iriat. This is the old writing. Many of the graffiti works reflect a burning desire to express opinions about the social, political and historical aspects of life in a turbulent region. Guy's creative way of tutoring was also born out of an historic moment. Two years ago, during the protest in Rothschild Avenue, I saw that many of my foreign students did not understand what was written on the banners and they needed mediation of Israeliness, Israeliness DNA, the Israeli psyche. Officially, it's illegal to paint graffiti on the walls, but as long as the artists don't do it in broad daylight, authorities won't be sending a police investigation team to find the criminal. The name of the artist is EPK, Eggplant Kid. Uh, who is actually making eggplants in all shapes and colors throughout Tel Aviv. Although Guy is a Facebook friend of many of the artists, he's not part of the milieu, and many of the meanings of the graffiti acts remain a mystery to him as well. I don't know his real name and I will not ask, I don't know his age, and I do not ask poets, what did you mean by this metaphor? So I do not ask artists, what did you mean by the bits here? That's the eggplant, it's fine. Through graffiti, iconic cultural and political figures come to life with a new interpretation to their famous quotes, often adjusting them to the current atmosphere in the region. Both in Tel Aviv and in Jerusalem, political and social opinions are given platform through the graffiti. What we see here is another fight that is happening in Jerusalem. It's about women's uh, place in the pub public space. And here we can see Adarat Nashim. It means uh, women glorification instead of women exclusion. We can see the response, like someone scratched it. In a region filled with tensions as it is, some find graffiti an artistic way of expression. The symbols, the letters, the paintings allow us to learn a lot about the history and dynamics of Israeli society. However, some might say there's a very thin line between art and vandalism. If it were your shop for 50 years and one day you wake up in the morning and you see this and you don't like it, then most probably you're going to say it's vandalism, as some people here say. Some graffiti artists present very unique works, like Braille graffiti for the blind, or poems unusually signed with their full real name, making the creators extremely attached to their works. I kind of compare it to the Facebook. Like, we have the wall on Facebook that we can write our opinions on. But in a way, when you're outside on the street, it's kind of a social protest. You could also see correspondence, like someone writes something and then someone would like draw an arrow and say, here, look at this, this is my response to this and this is what I think. It says Jews and Arabs refuse to be enemies. Someone took out the youth and made it Indians and Arabs <laughs> refuse to be enemies. Hodim, Hodim ve'arabim, Mesarvim. And someone came back with a marker and added the youth back. There's usually an unspoken agreement between the street artists not to touch another's work. But deleted graffiti is commonly seen, especially when it's a Star of David with other symbols of religion on it. So now it's even more of a symbol because now it says, OK, people don't, will not always accept every universal love. Despite its shaky legal status, the city hall usually understands graffiti's power in terms of tourism attraction of street art, sometimes even going so far as initiating graffiti projects. Uh, here we can see a wall that was ordered by the municipality. It's a special project that combines nightlife, um, art, food, uh, music, and everything that happens in Jerusalem. This is uncensored Israel. What we see is not a Ministry of Tourism brochure of picture-perfect Israel. It has all our problems and beautiful things and also the gray zones. Graffiti has always been a controversial means of expression. As such, it remains an international language continuing to represent freedom of speech and some might say freedom of art. I think most of it is art.
not vandalism.